a pleasant day to you, grade 11 niya, St. Nicholas the Great. So, welcome to the subject, Special Topics in Natural Sciences, and I am Sir Leomarek Pimidina, your subject teacher for this particular subject in this semester. I would like to welcome every single one of you to the Immaculate Conception School of Malola Senior High School, and welcome to the general academic strand. So, when it comes to the subject, special topics in natural sciences, the very first thing that all of you should remember, it is now the concept of measurement. When it comes to measurement, it is actually representing here the different intricate connection between science and mathematics. Always remember that natural sciences doesn't only include the concept of life sciences. It also includes the concept of physical sciences and for us to understand these physical sciences, we should always involve here mathematical computations, different types of problems for us to further understand these different types of sciences. Now, when it comes to this particular subject, it is actually the very first time that this subject will be offered to the Immaculate Conception School of Malola Senior High School. This is actually the first time that guest students will have an additional science-related subject for the students who want to pursue the engineering and at the same time the health and allied courses when they apply for different universities and colleges. Now, for the very first topic that we are going to have, it will actually involve here the concept of measurement. But remember that in our discussion in natural sciences, not all topics that are present on our discussion on natural sciences, not all top uh, on our discussion on natural sciences, not all topics that are included on your modules will be actually having a certain type of accompanied not all topics that is present on your modules will possess a video presentation that will simply be accompanied by other discussions. Some of the things that are actually included on your modules are self-explanatory and when it comes to the video presentations that I am going to show on your class, we are just going to focus on the important details, on the important parts, on the parts which you need to further understand with the aid of your subject teacher. Now, for this discussion, we're going to start with the scientific notation and the significant figures. Scientific notation, it is a convenient and widely used method of expressing large and small numbers. If you're going to look on your module on page number 3, you're actually going to observe here that any quantity can actually be expressed in the form of scientific notation in the form of capital letter N, times 10 raised to small letter n. Okay? So, these values are actually being represented by the following figures. Now, capital letter N, it is any number that is between 1 and 10. So, what is the meaning of this? Capital letter N, for us to properly write the scientific notation, it is the value that is starting from 1.0 to 9.9. .9. So these are the different values that we are going to include on the capital letter N. Then, on small letter N, these are now whole numbers that will start from 1, 2, 3, up to the infinity. The different values that we are going to include on this exponent are always whole numbers, either positive or negative whole numbers. We are not going to include here values just like 1.1, 2.2, so on and so forth. Okay? Always remember that the value that we are going to include on small letter n or the exponent will always be a whole number, either positive or negative integers. For instance, we have here the value 1,200,000. Five hundred sixty-seven point eighty-nine. Right? So this is our large value. How are we going to transform this to scientific notation? 
Okay. So, we are now going to follow the following steps. The first step, it is stated here that move the decimal point either on the left or the right of the value until there is a single non-zero digit on the left side of the decimal point. Okay? So, where is now our decimal point when it comes to this value? I'm just going to erase this. Our decimal point is present in between values of 7 and 8. Okay? So, according to this, so we are actually going to move the decimal point until there is a single non-zero digit on the left side of the decimal point. Okay? We're going to move it from left or right. In this case, the movement of the decimal point, it would be the decimal point will move from 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. Okay? Since 1 is a non-zero digit, we are now going to stop in this part. It means that the value of your decimal point will now be present in this location. Okay? That is for step number 1. Then for step number 2, count the number of place values you moved. Okay? The amount of place values will be the small letter N. Okay? How many place values did we move from the value that is present on this number? Okay? So, we simply move from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? Our value for n, it will now be equivalent to either positive or negative 6. Okay? So, later on, we're going to consider what would be the integer that we are going to use. Will it be positive or will it be negative? Now, According to rule number 2, the n or the exponent will be negative if you move the decimal place to the right, while it will be positive if you move it to the left. Since the movement of the decimal point is from right to left, the value of our exponent will be positive 6. Okay, so this is now the value of our exponent positive 6. Then, for step number 3, the number where the decimal place is located will be your n, then round it off to the nearest two decimal places. Now, going back to our value, 1,234,567.89 is actually a large value. According to rule number 3, you should round off our value, it will be equivalent to 1.23. That is now our capital letter N. Sir, why is it 1.23? Because if we're going to observe here, our capital letter N, always remember, it will simply be ranging from the value of 1.0 to 9.9. .9. And 1.23 is present in between those ranges. After we already identified the different values that we are going to use for the exponent, which is for small letter n, and the value for our integer for capital letter n, we are now going to combine them and write the proper scientific notation following the format n times 10 raised to small letter n. Now, Let's rewrite this. It will now be equivalent to 1.23 times 10 raised to positive 6. And that is now our scientific notation for the value of 1,234,567.89. What if we want to express different values from scientific notation to the non-scientific notation? 
way. Okay? So, for this example, for instance, we have the value of 6.75 times 10 raised to negative 4. Okay? Now, it's the other way around. What are we going to do when it comes to this certain type of conversion from scientific notation to non-scientific notation? We are just going to follow the rules, but retroactively. Okay? So, always remember, these are our values. We have the value of 6.75, then our exponent, it is negative 4. If you can still remember, as stated on rule number 1, okay, the decimal point will be moved from left to right if the value of the exponent is negative. While it will be from right to left if the value of the exponent is positive. In this case, if you're going to convert this, we are going to trace it the other way around. Okay? Since the value of our exponent is negative, what will now be the movement of our decimal point? Will it be from the left going to the right or from the right going to the left? Okay? Now, this is conversion. Okay? If the value of your exponent is negative 4, the movement of your decimal place will be from right to left. Okay? And how many decimal places, how many place values, it will be equivalent to 4 place values since our exponent is negative 4. So we're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4. Then this will now be the location for your new decimal point. Okay, so remember, if you're going to convert from scientific notation to non-scientific notation, if the value of your exponent is negative, the movement will be from right to left. If the value of your exponent is positive, the movement of the decimal point will be from left to right okay so those are the different movements for once you already moved the decimal place and the decimal point you're now going to fill those values with zero starting off with the value that is present on the left of the decimal point going to the right which is one two three four and now our value, which is written in the scientific notation, which is 6.75 times 10 raised to negative 4, is equivalent to 0 0.000675. Okay? Now, if you want to check if your answer is correct or wrong, okay? So if you want to check your answer, all you need to do is to simply follow the instructions. Okay? Move the decimal point either to the left or to the right depending on the non-zero digit that is present on the left side of the decimal point. So you're just going to move this decimal point 1, 2, 3, 4. And since you move your decimal place from left to right, the value now of your exponent will be equivalent to negative. Okay? Then, how many decimal places? We have 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 place values. Then, what is now the value of capital letter N? It is now equivalent to 6.75. Then, if you're going to check the values, the tally. So it simply means that your answer is correct. Your answer is valid. Okay? So those are just some of the things that you're going to consider when it comes to scientific notation. Let's proceed to the next part. Significant figures. 
But everywhere talking about significant figures, these are actually the different numbers which are very relevant from the term itself, significant. Okay? So, if these figures are significant, they are important, they are relevant. Just like whenever we are using the term significant others, it simply means that that person is important to every single one of you. Okay? So, walang hugot na sa part na yun. Now, in the case of significant figures, they're actually very important when it comes to determining what are the different values of different units that is actually present in any form of computations. Now, in the case of significant figures, there are actually different rules that are present already on your module. Please check page number 4 and page number 5 of your modules for the different rules that is actually involved in the writing of significant figures. In this case, let's now apply these rules in writing significant figures. Okay? So, let's go back to our value 1,230,000 67.89 How many significant figures are actually present in this value? Let's follow the different steps. On step number 1, all non-zero numbers are significant. Okay? So how many non-zero values are present in this given number? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay? So, we can conclude that there are 9 significant figures in this number. That is for rule number 1. How are we going to apply rule number 2? For instance, we have here the value which is equivalent to 1,000,000. Five hundred point twenty. How are we going to apply rule number two as well as rule number one? According once again to rule number one, all non-zero digits are considered to be as significant. So how many non-zero digits are present in this value? We have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we already have five non-zero values which are definitely significant then let's follow step number two all zeros written in between two non-zero numbers are significant how many zeros are actually sandwiched between non-zero values we have one two three okay so why are these two zeros included because you can actually observe that they are sandwiched between 5 and 2, which are non-zero values. So we can actually conclude that there are additional 1, 2, 3 significant values. Rule number 3, all zeros written on the right side of a non-zero numbers is known as trailing zeros, which are significant. Okay, so where are the trailing zeros in this value? Our trailing zero is present here, right after 2. Is this significant or not? According to rule number 3, it is significant. So we have additional significant value. All zeros written on the left side of the non-zero numbers are not significant. Now, are any zeros written on this side? On the left side of number 1. None. So technically, we have no non-significant figure. If we're going to tally, we have 5 plus 3 plus 1. We have a total of 9 significant numbers. So those are actually the things on how we are going to apply significant figures. So now let's proceed to the examples that are present on your module. For instance, for letter A, we have your 0 0.00450. Now, how many significant figures are present here? Let's count. Following rule number 1, all non-zero digits are 
significant. We have 4 and 5. So we already have 2 significant numbers. Then, the next one, zeros that are sandwiched in between non-zero digits. Do we have here zeros that are sandwiched between non-zero digits? Okay, so we are not going to apply rule number 2 here. Then, following rule number 3, according to rule number 3, all zeros that are present on the right side of the non-zero numbers, they are significant. So we have here zero that is present on the right side of number 5. So this is also considered as a significant figure. Then, on rule number 4, all zeros written on the left side of the non-zero numbers are not significant. So we have here the three zeros that are present on the left side of number 4. So it simply means that these are non-significant values while these are significant values. That is the reason why the total number of significant values or significant figures for letter A is equivalent to 3. And it is now up to you to inspect letter B, C, D, and E. So that concludes our discussion when it comes to scientific notation and significant figures. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me on our Google Classroom or send me an email. And we are going to address this on our consultation periods. And do not forget to answer your worksheet number one, which is all about significant figures and scientific notation. Thank you for listening and I am hoping that you learned a lot in this video presentation. For the next video presentation, we are now going to consider here the conversion of units.